Friends, you must be aware of the abbreviations for ME on a MAN BMW low speed propulsion engines. Just for a recall, M is for engine program series that is marine and E stands for electronically controlled engines. Basically, the ME engines are intelligent engines completely controlled by the engine control systems. In this video, I'll familiarize you about how the engine control systems play a vital role in efficiently operating an ME engine. The engine control systems is categorized into four set of controllers, the EICU, the ECU, the ACU and the CCU. Here I'll briefly describe you one by one the functions of each controller. All the controllers simply control the basic and auxiliary systems necessary for functioning of an ME engines like the starting and reversing sequence, exhaust valve actuation, the cylinder lubrication, electronically profiled injection, the auxiliary blower function, operation of starting air valves and so on. The EICU, ECU and ACU are installed with multipurpose controllers and the CCU are installed with MPC-10. The multipurpose controllers is a computer unit which has no user interface such as a display or a keyboard but has a wide variety of input and output junctions for interacting with the sensors and actuators of the engine. In all the MPCs, the command signals are continuously processed through a different protective algorithms before executing them. Now to start with EICU, the engine interface control unit. Friends, as you all know, the main engine can be controlled from three different consoles. First from the bridge console, secondly from the engine control room and third is from local operating panel. The command signals are given to the engine via these three control stations. Whenever the command signal is generated from the bridge console or the engine control room console, the EICU comes into picture. The command signals are directly received by the EICU. And whenever the command signal is given from the local operating panel, the ECU receives the signals and gets initiated, which I'll explain you later. Now there is EICU A and EICU B. Both units are redundant and operate in parallel. In short, when the telegraph handle of either bridge or engine control room is moved in ahead or ascent direction, based on which console you have selected, the control signal from the telegraph is received by the both EICUs. The main navigational command is the speed set point, that is requested speed and direction of engine rotation. In the EICUs, the raw speed set point is processed by a series of protective algorithms. The processed speed set point is further communicated to the ECUs. The alarm systems and the safety system signals are also generated by EICUs, thus protecting the engine from any abnormal operation. So we can say the command speed set point signal is processed by the multipurpose controllers of EICUs and further sent to MPCs of ECUs. The second controller of engine control systems is ECU, the engine control units. The ECUs are basically the governors calculating the needed fuel index. As I mentioned earlier, the processed speed set point signal from EICUs is further sent to ECUs. The amount of fuel needs to be calculated for each cylinder firing in order to obtain desired engine speed. This calculation is made by the MPCs of ECUs. The output signal from the MPCs is a request for fuel amount to be injected for next combustion. This request is run through different protective algorithms like the fuel limiters and the resulting amount of fuel command is produced. Based on the algorithm of the selected engine running mode, the injection profile is selected, the timing parameters for the fuel injection and exhaust valve actuation are calculated and the pressure set point for the hydraulic power supply is derived. Also the resulting cylinder lubrication feed rate for each individual cylinder unit is calculated. Now the resulting amount of fuel command, the requested fuel injection profile, 
the timing parameters and the resulting cylinder lubrication feed rate amount are all sent to the CCUs of the respective cylinders via the control network. Also, the hydraulic pressure set point is sent to all ACUs. For redundancy purpose, the control systems have two ECUs operating in parallel and performing the same task, one being a hot standby for the other. If one of the ECUs fail, the other unit will take over the control without any interruption. The third controller of the engine control systems is the CCU, the cylinder control units. Each unit has its individual CCU. The CCUs basically control the FIVA valves, the starting air valves and the cylinder lubricators. As mentioned earlier, the valid data signal for each firing cycle is communicated from ECU to CCUs. On the correct start angle, the fuel injection is initiated and is controlled according to the fuel amount command and the injection profile command. When the injection is completed, the exhaust valve open and close angles are set up using the TACO function and the exhaust valve control signal is then activated on the appropriate crank angles. The cylinder lubricator is activated according to the feed rate amount received from the ECU. All the CCUs are identical and in the event of a failure of the CCU of one cylinder, only this cylinder will automatically be put out of operation. Friends, I'll explain you the procedures for running the engine with cylinder out of operation in my upcoming videos. The fourth controller of engine control systems is the ACU, the auxiliary control units. The ACUs control the hydraulic power supply system and the electrical startup pumps using the pressure set point given by the ECUs as a reference. Also, it controls the start and stop of the auxiliary blowers according to the scavenge pressure. The control of the auxiliary equipment on the engine is normally divided among 3 to 4 ACUs depending upon the engine model so that in the event of a failure of one unit, there is sufficient redundancy to permit continuous operation of the engine. Guys, these are the four basic set of controllers of the engine control systems working together to operate the engines efficiently. Hope you have understood the basic concept of the engine control systems. If at all you have any queries related to the ECS system, post it in the comment section. I will come back to you with the clarification. Please do like and subscribe my channel for more interesting videos on MA engines. Thank you for watching the video. Wish you all a safe sailing and healthy stay on board. Thank you.